uh, we left just few months after the after the demonstration. Huh? It was uh, in 1988 August demonstration, and then March 89 we left Rangoon huh? because my wife, huh, being the daughters of one of the leaders of the clan, when the this clan started the freedom uh, and right, no? this movement started. My father-in-law was one of the the pioneer, no? the leaders of the clan. This is uh, Johnny Tu. Johnny Tu, you, he has a good friend, Johnny and Luther. Yeah. This is related to the to two uh, twins. Use the name, yeah. use their name, okay. Luther and Johnny. Eh? So Johnny and Luther, they are very good leaders at that area and they are well respected by the people. Yeah, in the middle, I don't know. My wife, when I told her that, she says she grew up in this uh, kind of situation, huh? environment, she know of the living in the jungle is very difficult, very harsh. So he says no. But you see, what happened is, when 88, when the uprising, huh? demonstration and when killing, even in Rangoon, you only hear a shooting and huh? killing everywhere. Every day you hear rumors going around. People are, there are people going around to put poison in the water, poison in the food, or even there are people going around to throw the fire, or make the house caught on fire like that. And there are also rumors about the uh, uh, road blocking, you know, they will block the road coming into the city, or water supply will be destroyed or the electricity, something like that. So, living in Rangoon is very insecure. Eh? And also, a lot of rumors, a lot of shooting. Finally, my wife also got tired of living in Rangoon and they said, okay, now if you want to go, we can go. <laughs> Take only small, uh, one small bag each. So my father-in-law was very old already at the time. Eh? 70... Close to 80. So we, he said he will come with us. Then, when the clan started the freedom movement, huh? she's the brigadier of the Sis Brigade. Mm. Now in the Mesot, south of Mesot and that area. Huh? It took us more than three months to reach the headquarters. Yeah, we have to walk. When we came, uh, we came to the end of the journey, the road where we can, we came by bus, huh? and then we. We have to start walking. And you know, we are a big group, no? 13. Uh, 12. 12 or 13 of, them, of us. And there are 17 people helping us to carry our things. No? But when these people, you know, they look at our, our backs and all this, my father in law, he says, we cannot go with this. We cannot start the journey with this, this old man. Because they know they have to carry him cannot walk. Huh? You have to climb up the mountain going down like that. So he says, okay, if you have to decide whether you leave your things or leave this old man. Then we said, no, we cannot leave this old man. <laughs> he had to be with us. Eight, eight persons have to carry my father-in-law. Huh? They have to team up, four person a team. So they have two teams take turns and carry him up the mountain down like that. We sleep in the jungle eh? with mosquitoes and all. But go that we have the mosquito net with us. We and the mosquito net it's very useful. God, the way God provides our need. We came you know, every time we we have a, we we are ready for a rest and prepare our food. And we just go to find a small stream. And whenever I go to the, see that small stream, there are so many fish. Eh? So what I did was I used the mosquito net eh, to catch the fish. <laughs> we laid it down and we drive the fish and many came into that. And then we get food, we get many fish for that, for our, for our meal. My sister-in-law and even the, my nephew, they all get malaria in the jungle there. But there's no medicine. But there's no medicine. We have to use only the 
the traditional medicines eh? with the tree box or the fruits. At that time we have the Manaplo and we came to Manaplo and then we met with the leaders then. Um, at the time, General Bumya is also the president of, president of the KNU and he know my father-in-law very much. They are good friends.